In this video, I'm going to explain the different file types that Sony uses, and we're going to set up some of the preferences, such as folder location defaults and file bit depth settings. A few basics about project formats first. There are several different file formats that Sona can work with, but the most common is the CWP project file, also known as normal. There is no audio saved in a normal project file. The audio is saved in separate WAV files and the project file tells Sona where to find those audio files. You decide where on your system audio is stored, either in a global audio folder or in an individual projects folder, known as per project audio. Where you store audio is one of the more important decisions that you'll make. Transfer of audio to and from disk can be quite taxing for a computer system. Therefore, if you have more than one hard drive, you will see some performance benefit from storing your audio files on a different drive to your system and program files. A drive that is dedicated to audio read and write doesn't have to keep servicing the operating systems and other programs disk read and write demands. As a result, you're less likely to see dropouts and other glitches. Don't worry if you only have one drive though, Sona is perfectly usable with just one. Another Sona format is the CWB format known as a bundle file. The difference between this and a normal project file is that the audio is stored as part of the bundle file and therefore much larger files are created. However, if you wish to move a project around from one system to another, a bundle is an easy way to do it as all the necessary files are included. It's also possible to share projects and back them up using the per project method already mentioned. The other file format is a project template or CWT file, and we'll look at those in detail later. We're about to look at the file preferences amongst others in this section, but it's also worth mentioning here that it's important to only use the tools provided within Sona when deleting any audio files from your hard drives. These tools will ensure that the files you're about to delete aren't in use by one of your projects. We'll look at safe deletion practices later. We need to open preferences, which I'll do by pressing P. Then I'll select the File Folder Locations tab. From here, we can set up our folder locations, although for most purposes, the defaults work well. They are changed using the regular Windows convention of either typing a path or navigating to your chosen location and selecting OK. Clicking the icon to the right of each path will allow you to browse for a file. There are several paths that can be set here, and although the defaults are perfectly okay, if you want to reorganize storage options, this is where it's done. One worth a special mention is the project files location at the top. As I mentioned earlier, if you have per project audio selected, your audio files will be stored here, and there'll be some benefit from using a different drive to your system drive. Next, we'll move on to the Audio Data section tab. At the top, we have the Global Audio Folder path. This is where audio will be stored if you aren't using per project audio. And again, there'll be some benefit from using a different drive to your system drive. Picture Folder is where the waveform graphics for all your project's audio waveforms will be stored. Sona will recreate these graphics as necessary or can be made to recreate them if need be so there's no need to worry too much about files in this directory. Always copy imported audio. We'll copy any audio we import to your audio folder. Keep this check to keep all audio in one place, especially if using per project audio and moving projects around. Always import broadcast WAV files at their timestamp, forces Sona to ignore the now time and import files at their SMPTE timestamp setting. Export Broadcast Waves by default. Check this option if you want the Broadcast Waves option to appear by default in the Export Audio dialog box. Apply SMPTE offset to Broadcast Wave timestamps. The offset itself is set in the Project Clock area of preferences we looked at earlier, and this decides whether that is added at export time or not. Allow importing of WAV file queue markers. Does as it says, and will import any queue markers that may exist in WAV files. We looked at bit depth settings for our audio interface earlier, and this is where we set the defaults for file bit depths. Record bit depth. This is where the bit depth for any files that we record is set. Although interfaces only currently support up to 24 bit, it doesn't matter if this is set to 32 or higher. The recorded data will be padded out with zero bits, but there won't be any quality increase. 
Render bit depth. Use this to set bit depth that processing such as bouncing and freezing will use. Set it to 32 for almost lossless processing, but there are other options available. Import bit depth. The bit depth that imported audio will use. Original is fine, but again you can choose other options. Per project audio has had several mentions. It is on by default and I recommend leaving it on. This will ensure that if you have the always copy imported audio files option checked above, all imported audio will be stored in a project's own individual audio folder. It makes moving projects around much easier. Now let's switch to the VST settings tab. Here is where we set any paths to VSTs that you wish to use in Sonar. The default works for all of those included with the program, but third party VSTs may get installed elsewhere. If so, you can include their paths here. It is best to leave scan for VST plugins on startup checked so that any new VSTs that you install are automatically registered within the program. If you find that you are having trouble with or missing plugins, try checking rescan fail plugins and clicking scan VST folders. We'll look at the plugin manager in more detail later. BitBridge is the mechanism that Sony uses to allow 32-bit VSTs to load into a 64-bit system. Sony will handle the memory allocation and BitBridge server allocation automatically, but you can override it here if you wish. An explanation of BitBridge servers is beyond the scope of this video. Unless you understand what you're doing, it's best left on automatic. If it isn't already selected, click on the advanced choice at the bottom of preferences to reveal more options tabs. Let's look at the initialization file. This section allows you to add variables to the Cakewalk Ini file. A variable is a more specialized option setting. There are several variables that can be included in this file, and one that I use is warn silent buses equals zero, which will stop Sona warning me if I have a bus assigned to no output. To set a variable, type its name in the option box, the value you want to set in the value box, and click on set. The delete button can be used to delete any existing highlighted variables. A full list of available variables can be found in the Cakewalk Ini section of the help file. Let's move to the advanced tab. At the top we have autosave. This is where the autosave options are set and zero in both fields switches autosave off. I've just mentioned a couple of things about autosave, which is sometimes misunderstood. First, it does not affect or interfere with your original file at all. It saves a second file called autosave copy of, whatever your project is called. You're still free to choose when to save your original file, and it's completely independent of a regular save. Think of it as selecting save as automatically running in the background. Secondly, it won't autosave while recording or during playback, so you don't have to worry about an autosave cutting in at a crucial moment. It will, however, provide you with a backup file should the worst happen and Sona crashes corrupting the file you are working on, however unlikely that is. Enabling versioning will mean that Sona saves a fresh timestamped copy of your project for however many copies you set here. Once that number is reached, the oldest version will be overwritten. This can be helpful if you make changes and then wish to revert back to an earlier version of the project. Load non-Sona files in offset mode. This will open all non-CWP files such as bundle files or MIDI files in offset mode. I'll explain offset in the automation section. Create default drum map for non-Sona files. This option ensures that if you load a file such as a MIDI file, you won't have to create a drum map for any drum tracks. Sona will automatically create a basic one for you. Allow only one open project at a time. If you check this, when you start a new project or open one, any existing project will be closed. You'll be asked to save changes if you've made any. Ask before sending system exclusive when opening projects. If you check this option, Sona will ask you before sending any sysx data that a file may contain. Many MIDI files, for example, will attempt to send a GM reset sysx message to your synth when they load. On startup, load normal template. This option is helpful if you are using per project audio. It will allow you to have a blank starting point if you wish when opening Sona without having to name a file every time. You can also press Ctrl N to achieve the same thing. If you check always use offline help, 
Sona will always refer to the on-disk manual when searching for help. And that covers the file preferences settings.